going on, everybody? It's David Palmer, Leo King, and this is my four-year anniversary, and I thought I'd do a really fun video to show you where it all started, where it's been, the different cities, the places I've done horoscopes, and I just want to say thank you for all the support over the last four years. Actually, it goes even longer than that, but I started doing a daily video on April 10th, 2012, and so, so ironic that today is April 10th, 2016, and I'm doing it back on a webcam like I used to. As I'm sure you know, I do my horoscopes now on an app, and I do many different kinds. I do your weekly sun sign horoscope. I do daily videos. I do weekly tarot. I do d weekly intuitive. I do so many videos all on a green screen studio now. And then, of course, I do the uncut video either here at the studio or out in nature. But it's very much developed over four years. And I wanted to show you that development and show you all the different aspects and where it can take you and for it to be inspiration for you. You know, I wasn't, I didn't have an investor. I didn't have somebody buy me things. I didn't, I wasn't waiting for my bank account to be at a certain amount of money to quit my job and to just go for my passion. It was just me and the webcam. And how ironic that here I am doing it again four years later. But I hope that that gives you some sort of encouragement that you can follow your dreams and do what you want in your life. I never would have dreamed that I have the Leo King Studios now, that I rent this huge office and studio now, and it's turned into this mega corporation and, and, and one of the leading top astrology apps in the world and the number one astrology video app in the world out of just me starting on a webcam. So thank you for all the support. I truly appreciate it, and I really hope that you enjoy this video. And I really couldn't be here without you, the viewer. And I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. And I thank you so much for everything that you've done for me, the Leo King. Hope you enjoy the video and thanks so much for the support. And I'm wishing you all the best. Welcome to your inclusive astrology horoscope for Tuesday, April 10th, 2012. I'm your astrologer, David Palmer, here to illuminate the collective consciousness. Tuesday brings us Pluto retrograde in Capricorn. Now Pluto, the planet of transformation and really great change, is going retrograde in Capricorn. Now retrograde is when a planet really gives us a review process in our life and goes internal. Welcome to your inspirational astrology horoscope for Wednesday, May 16th, 2012. I'm your astrologer, David Palmer, here to illuminate the collective consciousness. What's cracking? I'm with Bambi here. Hope everybody is going to have a wonderful Wednesday. I want to talk about the Pluto and Uranus square. We also, by the way, had Venus go retrograde yesterday in Gemini, which is a big change in energy. I'm sure you felt that change. But I want to talk about the Pluto and Uranus square. I've been hearing from clients, I've been hearing and reading all over. Some people aren't feeling the, the big fortune of Jupiter that we just had with the Sun conjunction. And we've been having a lot of good fortune in astrological terms with a couple grand trines, a six point star. We have a huge square that has formed and has formed for quite a while, but we are talking about within only a degree and a half, almost two degrees with Pluto and Uranus. Hi there, I'm astrologer David Palmer and I want to have a quick discussion about this solar eclipse happening on Sunday, May 20th and why this is connected to the Palladians and why this is such a rare and faded eclipse that is the initiation of a big part of 2012. Welcome to your Inspirational Astrology Horoscope for Thursday, March 21st, 2013. I am Astrologer David Palmer here to illuminate the collective consciousness. Well, I am out in the middle of nowhere. I literally went to some street that I'm not allowed to go to. It was like a closed road because a redwood tree had like blocked the road and I totally drove through it. And I ended up like straight up like in the middle of the redwood forest. Here, I'll just show you guys. I mean, we are like in the deep, deep. It's just me out here. It's pretty cool. I mean, look at look at this road. It goes down 
nowhere. I mean, we're really, I mean, these trees go all the way up. Anyway, let's get down to the horoscope. Well, I still got some light. I want to get out of here before it gets dark. All right, first off, wow. We have really shifted into Aries. Now here we got Venus. Venus comes into Aries today, and this is really us feeling the power. But a little about this uh, Venus and Aries too. This is uh, always a very powerful time for Venus. I just I just saw this beach and I had to show you guys. I got a sunset here that's ridiculous. I don't even know what beach this is, but uh, I mean, look at this place. It's pretty ridiculous. Wow. This place is pretty cool. But Venus and Aries, beautiful placement for Aries. I always call it the blow up doll in the zodiac. <laughs> True beans. Anytime you see somebody with Venus and Aries, you know you're going to get a party. You know you're going to get some hotness too. Um, very passionate time for relationships, but they got to. Stay stimulated, they gotta stay hot. You gotta keep the candle lit. You gotta keep the fire burning. You know, so now when it comes to partnerships, when it comes to our value systems, we gotta find what ignites us right now, what makes us feel heroic, which makes us feel strong, which learn from your past mistakes. This is where we face our past mistakes head first right now, and we understand why the past has brought us back to this place of how we can you know, step forward on this energy and get out of it. You know, Mars in Pisces is ready to leave the past behind. But we have to face the past head first. And you can't let your beliefs feel like, oh yeah, I did that in the past, I won't do it again. You know, I believe because I believe. No, you gotta go face it. You gotta go see why and understand to make the belief. Don't let your beliefs, you know, oh, there's some seals right here, guys. They came to hang out. Let's see. We're going with the flow. Right? Yeah, baby. Now this is going with the flow. They came to say hi. They've been hearing about the horoscopes. What's up, guys? Oh, they're so cute. Um, so the seals came out to say what up to us, guys. And you know, they came to say, don't let your beliefs get in between you. Don't let your beliefs think they know everything right now because they don't. They don't know the direction that spirit's wanting us to go. Our feelings, our intuition know that. So our spiritual lessons and our spiritual values, how we feel good from spirit, especially now that we're waking up in our life. We are waking up to the new place. We are waking up to the new starts. We are waking up emotionally. We are leaving the past behind, big time, because the moon is opposed to Pluto. Especially today, it's opposing Pluto. It's been squaring this Mars Uranus energy. So there's this really deep emotional energy to really tap forward. How are you feeling in your life? How do you feel about your new starts? How do you feel about the concrete of this structure you need to change in your life? Are you living in your pure energy? I'm gonna be real. Coming out here and doing a horoscope on Mount Shasta is pure. You know, it's following and putting my spiritual self and I put my light spreading first. I put it beyond what I'm gonna eat today. I put it beyond what time I'm getting to my next destination. I put it, bef uh, I put it all of this before, I put this before everything. I put it before a football game. I put it before, I put it before everything in my life to spread light, to spread my truth, to spread realness, to spread my core, to spread channeling higher vibrations on this planet. And as I'm sitting at a high vibrational Palladian spot, I ask you, are you a Malibu light of conduit change or is your light burnt out? And are you caught up in a bunch of bullshit? Are you eating bullshit? Are you not interacting with nature? Are you not interacting with this world? Are you not interacting with your truth? Are you not on the go? Are you not journeying? Are you not connecting with who you really are? That's pretty raw. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, what this time is about. I feel that are coming through relationships, this can be some real weird 
Weird energy right now, especially as the sparks are about to fly. This is trying to get us unstuck out of our lives, out of stuck relationships, stuck jobs, stuck circumstances, stuck energy, whether it's you not expressing your emotions to people, maybe there's that stuck energy between that. This is putting the rock under the tire to get you out, so that makes it a little weird. Makes it a little freaky too in some circumstances for some people, because they don't know how to deal with this. And in Virgo, there's all this energy to want to do it the certain way, to have everything work out the right, perfect way, especially as Venus wants it perfect and harmony and it's under stress. There's all this stress in the skies to make it a certain way. It's just not going to happen that certain way. You're going to have to follow the clues and the clues are emotionally. The clues are the plan. I think the plan is so important right now that you know the end goals of where you're going right now in your life. Yes, I kind of sound like a parent, but it is very true in the astrology right now. The goal is where we must work our hardest for, the end result, the last stand. What is it that you are reaching for in your life? And that's where your greatest potential is because you can start funneling by the signs and by all this energy and this karma and this destiny and this crossroad points that's going in these crazy directional infinity roads that we can go down at this point, which is really crazy because I'm sure right now you're at a point to where, wow, life can go many different directions. I'm Astrology Horoscope for Wednesday, September 4, 2013. I am Astrologer David Palmer, the Leo King, here to illuminate the collective consciousness. Well, we are almost to a powerful new moon. It's going to happen in the wee hours of the morning when we all go to bed tonight. So I think it's important for us to note that there's a big change on the horizon, especially tomorrow. As we do have this new moon building, this is a, a new reset button in our lives. Different. Your fears will be tested, you know, your emotions, whether you're going to come into it or, or want to step out of it. You know, we're going to have to indulge ourselves. We're going to have to really step into this story. There's not much available for stepping out, you know? The universe is wanting us to engage, and, and there's a lot of engagement that happens today. So I think it's about becoming aware of where you're engaging and just becoming aware, you know, and, and not being afraid. This is also a moon opposing Mars, and, and Mars is now starting to square Jupiter. I mean, there is a lot happening. Today, March 3rd, 2014, I'm astrologer David Palmer, the Leo King, here to illuminate the collective consciousness. Well, over the weekend, I did my show Spiritual House Sessions, pulling tarot cards, going into the astrology, channeling it all into a house music mix. It's such an awesome show. Check out the video link down below, or you can download the MP3, which that link is below as well. And I also did my March 2014 webinar, going deeper into this month. I called it Opening the Portal. We are definitely in a portal here, and if you want to find out more what this month is all about, especially the big bang coming at the end of the month, check out that link below. And yes, I just got back from the Oscars. I almost didn't come for the horoscope, but I had to set up the studio. I had to get in here because there is such a big shift we are going through. We have just gone through a huge new moon, a, con a trine to Jupiter, these big opportunities the universe wants to show us. Are we willing to paint our conscious energy now in the right direction? Or are we going to be unconscious about areas that the universe might be trying to open the doors for? That's a big question, I think, in your life now. I think the universe has shown some very powerful new observations in your life. I think that the universe as well has showed you, you have everything that you need right in front of you right now. It's time to reclay everything. 2014, I'm astrologer David Palmer, the Leo King, here to illuminate the collective consciousness. Hope everybody's doing wonderful. We are stepping into the big eclipse season here in October. So guess what that means? My big October webinar is available now at inclusiveastrology.com. One hour into the whole entire month. You do not want to miss this video. Venus Virgo thing. Well, a moon in Virgo too, we could be very critical today, but we could also be seeing the truth. Not so much like a secret revealed or anything, but we could actually start to see energy for what's real and what to do with it. We could get crafty. The moon will oppose Neptune today, so there's this kind of like, you know, uh, this fight, this battle for what's real and what the imagination is. Sometimes we need to tap into our inner spirit, sometimes not be too critical, learn to let go. There could be, this could be a day where you need to learn to let go with the flow. Want the most inspiring, fun, and dynamic horoscopes delivered to your phone every day? And we do it all on video with text message notifications. Download and subscribe to the Leo King app now and wake up to astrology like you've never seen before.
stories to talk about today. First off, the Suge Night shooting here in Hollywood. I really want to talk about that. And how is that connected with the California earthquake? There's a connection. We're going to talk about that. The world stage is actually getting a little crazy right now. We're going to talk about the government stuff that's shifting and this war going on with ISIS. And there's actually some good news. We had an American hostage that was rescued, and I predicted that if you watched my last show. And I'm going to talk about a crazy fight on an airplane. This is definitely an episode you are not going to want to miss. Make sure you check it out. Hollywood Astrology, I'll see you inside. He's all over the place. You really need to tap in because it's wonderful. Um, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Well, yes, my name is uh, David Palmer. I go by the Leo King because I'm a Leo. But uh, the whole story, I guess, on how I got here is pretty crazy. As a young kid in high school, I loved women, of course. And so I was going through all the different cheerleaders and you know, dating all these different girls. And I'm like, how am I going to figure this out? Because it started to really you know, question me. I'm like, gosh, what's the right girl for me? Still, you know, to this day, I'm trying to find this question. But it really was astrology that let me start to see the difference between people right away. And as a young high school person, it was great for picking up on girls at the party. I mean, it's awesome. What's your sign? Boom. Instantly, all the other guys are like in the corner, you know, drinking, looking cool. And I'm like talking to all the girls. But, you know, I took a really serious turn with it once I got out of high school and I actually joined the military and uh, some really crazy things happened to me. Um, I got put in jail, I got kicked out of the military, and I was the leader in boot camp. And that was a really big, powerful experience as an 18-year-old, being on your own, being kicked out of the military and being put in prison. Like, that is a pretty deep thing. And of course, my mother, who's in the audience, was totally freaked out by it. You know, that, well, how did David Palmer end up in jail? Well, I started to look into astrology, and what do you know? 2002 into 2003, Jupiter was in Leo. Oh, God, I'm a Leo, aren't I? All this crazy stuff started to make sense to me. So I really started to divulge all my energy into astrology. Understand what's happening on a bigger scale of the play. And it is this play that is about to change. Not only because of this new age that we came into, but this new kickstart of the sun, this new energy, and these solar flares that we're getting which to me houses the complete mainframe of spirituality of this reality is our sun. In school. That's why I was into history. Um, well, I think it's time to transition. I don't think it's about letting go completely, but I think, you know, if you ever see signs and how they're all broken up, right? We're at what we call a cusp. Who's a cusp baby here? Being born on a cusp means you're born in between. So you're kind of like in both. You're kind of salsa and you're kind of guac. <laughs> I like both. I'm not afraid to do both. So if we look at the transition right now of where we're at galactically shifting at this new point, because even though we showed the slide, Was that the one I want to go to? Oh yeah, even though we showed the slide, okay, this is great. We made it to the line. We made it. Think about how long it took to get to that damn line. 6,000 years. So, or actually 12,000 years from the last time it was at the line. So think about this. Okay, moving into the line and like moving past it's going to take a long damn time. You know what I'm talking about? Because it's not like, okay, we got on the line and then we're going to keep going. It's like, no, 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 no. Welcome to the line. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And if you just look at time, it's like, welcome to the line. So, but how beautiful to even be at the line. That we're, that's what we're living at. That's what consciousness is. If you just look at, I mean, look at these mountains I drove through today. I was like, okay, that didn't happen in 10 days, you know? Like, that's where you mix science too with like truth, you know, like in spirituality. It's like, you know this is right, but the science is, well, yeah, that did take millions of years. That didn't take seven days. So, you know, that's where I think this new your Aquarian age is, which there is no religion. Because if we say it's a religion, then we're all screwed because we're all locked into something. And there needs to be always freedom to get all views constantly and shine in all directions. And that's what Uranus, or Uranus is, and more importantly, Aquarius, because it needs freedom. Ourselves, because let's give ourselves some power here, we have the power to know if we're on our life track or not. And that's what astrology does is, in my opinion, it gives us 
the exact knowledge of we're on track. Because this track of life, it isn't meant to be so like perfect, right? You know, we have free will and it goes all over the place and it's like a wild ride down the river, you know? But at least we wanna know, oh yeah, we're going down the river. Even though there's gonna be crazy turns, we're going down. We don't wanna be going upstream. That's when it just, just, and we all know people, especially in this town, man, when you're walking down the street, it's like, get out of my way, fool. It's like, whoa, dude, I'm from California. We, we kind of walk forever, you know? It's like, jeez. You have noticed that there. I got to pick my bead and I got to stay right. If I go left, because I'm weird, I'm a channeler for a living, so I'm really sensitive. So I like to kind of go by walls. You know, I feel safer next to a wall. So I'll be walking against the walls going the wrong way and everybody's like, come on, dude. I'm like, shit. But that, that's life where there I am trying to control it going against the flow of the universe and I have to pay for it, you know? So even though I really want to go against that wall, I have to learn to surrender all the time and go, fuck it, I gotta go let the, all the New Yorkers go? Oh, shit, you know? And there's a part of me that feels vulnerable and sensitive to that because I'm a sensitive empath for a living. So when I'm in energy, it's like, holy shit. Too much. Okay, I really believe that our sign has a huge impact on a lot of our characteristics, and that really is what's so fascinating to me, especially when it comes to our love life. So now I have David Palmer, otherwise known as the Leo King, here to talk about horoscopes and tell us about our loved ones and our potential future loved ones. Mm -hmm. What's up? What's up? How you doing? Oh my gosh, how cool is it that we're both Palmer? I know, yeah, it's the Palmer amazing. gang up in here. So look, I love signs, and I'm doing a little bit of my chart because charts are all based on, you know, the city, the town you were born in, the state, the actual time of your birth, and then of course your birthday. And so I know that I'm a rising Cancer. Cancer, yeah. Uh, uh, a moon in Sagittarius. Yes. Yes, you got the sun and Mercury conjunct. So Tell there's me about so this. much in your chart. First of all, being that Cancer <laughs> rising is so interesting with the Virgo because, of course, Virgos are all about everything, little things and all the details of everything. And you got Mercury on top, so you're just like crazy about the details. But you've got that Cancer rising, which brings your emotion into it so powerfully. Yeah. You were born with Venus on the rising, so you attract so much. Venus is the women planet. It's the beauty planet. So you're an attractor. You attract whatever you want. You have the sun in the second house, so you're a manifester. You're going to manifest this whole life, and you're going to collect so many things. It also is a little bougie. Don't tell me no bad. It's a little bougie, I'll be honest, okay? <laughs> like, it's a little bit bougie, but it's really good for manifesting. Oh my gosh, okay, this is really all good stuff. Okay, so let's talk about some famous celebrity couples. Let's talk about how their relationships, who you got for me first? Well, we got Kim and Kanye, they just got together, right? Okay, so what, is the, what do their signs tell us about them? Well, Kim's a Libra. Oh, and lover. Kanye's a Gemini, so of course the air signs go together great. Now, Kim is a Libra, and Saturn went through Libra the last couple years, and it's finally left. So Libras are finally figuring out what they want. When it comes to the Zodiac, the man Hollywood trusts to steer them right is astrologer David Palmer. I believe that celebrities are attracted to astrology and the metaphysical because they're very open people. Celebrities want to find their power of self. They want to be their best. And I believe that they're magicians, and I believe that they're here in the city of Hollywood, which is named after Hollywood, the actual wood that's used for a magician wand, to come here and find magic. And I believe this stuff is true magic, the real magic of life. David gave us the latest on one of Hollywood's favorite couples. Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. They're a great couple, and when you look at their planets, they're perfectly matched. Even though a Libra and a Virgo is not a typical match, they have this really unique aspect to bring them together, and there's a freedom aspect to their life. The ability to kind of be free and wild and a little bit exciting is why they stay together. That means soul, body, mind, all of it together in a cohesive unit moving forward. If I was to sum it up, that's what it would be. <laughs> I love it. Well, I think it's very important because especially in this new age that we're having and there's so many different beautiful tools out there, it's one thing to learn about them and hear about them and talk about them, but the other is applying it and manifesting with it and really sitting into your truth. And today I really want to set up where the astrology is and I would love to get your opinion and 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 see what tools you can give us to actually, you know, apply that into our lives. So is anybody into astrology out here? Who's <laughs> into astrology, really? You know, the one thing about astrology is a lot of people have it wrong. You know, uh, it's not just planets and this weird guy with the turban on in the backseat of the car telling you that your life's gonna be horrible in two weeks. 
You know, it's like, uh, it's a very spiritual thing. It's like, uh, it's embedded in our history. And, um, you know, I think events like this, you know, where people come together, whether we're displaying art or we're displaying fashion or, or whatever, you know, I think it's awesome that we can all come together and the whole part of this show is collaboration, you know? In the spiritual world, believe it or not, there's a huge collaboration going on. It doesn't matter if you're into astrology or if you're Christian or if you're, you know, any different kind of religion, you know, I feel there's this coming together now all over the world. It's more than just in fashion. It's everywhere. And, um, and I think that's why I signed up for this event, when I heard about it being so collaborative and when I found out that everybody behind this is about making that happen, you know, I signed right up and it was like, I didn't even care when I had to come, if I had to fly or drive, I actually drove, you know, I made sure that I came here. So it's awesome to meet everybody here. Everybody's been so cool. Thank you, David. And there's like this hip thing about Portland. You know, like, you go down the streets and you're like, wow, it's hip here, it's hip here, and there's no crazy person gonna kill you. You know, I'm like, wow, this is great. <laughs> you know, I live on Hollywood Boulevard where you do not wanna walk down the street. Like, seriously, like, 2 a.m. is like cut off, you know, and then you're like, okay, and you're like, oh yeah. Were you in Hollywood Boulevard just now? I thought I was the co host. I thought I could, like, take breaks and, you know, whatever. Sorry about that. Were you getting numbers from me and the models back there? Uh, I, I was trying to. Okay, thank That's you. Yeah, kind of what you wanted me to do. Right and David! My name's David, and I'm a house DJ and astrologer. That hair is like a lethal weapon. I'm David, I'm a house DJ and astrologer. What time are you? Very much in Gemini. Really? I'm zero degree Leo. I'm able to express my inner soul without that rising filter. Okay, so there are 12 zodiac signs, right? Yep. Break that down for me. All right, so the waters are the Pisces, the Scorpios, and the Cancers. If you're the same sign, you're the same color. So it's like you see red, they see red. It goes great at first, I'll be honest. Usually the sex is great right away. You know, things are just like, woo! Right off the bat. Why are you picking up your knees? <laughs> It was not fun for me to see, of course. I mean, come on. If you're gonna dress up like a girl, dress up as a hot, sexy girl, not some cheap, dirty hooker. I have a bad feeling about this. What the DJ learns in this whole process is how to command and lead with his masculine energy and his drive and his ambition, but at the same time, learn and understand the female role and how the female role is acceptance and giving and nurturing and how you can meet with action and courage and strength and also follow that with love and nurturing and compassion and, and bridge both together and get back into the yin and yang of male, female. Come on down here. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate it, brother. How could I possibly know that JLo and Mark's marriage would shatter months before it actually did? Welcome to your inspirational astrology horoscope for Tuesday, January 15th, 2013. I'm astrologer David Palmer here to illuminate the collective consciousness. Well, that moon is still in Pisces today and it actually is in a really good place making a lot of energy for us to really tap into our sensitivities, to really feel the flow in our life. We talked a lot yesterday about the flow, about just letting things happen, about really tapping into our spiritual self, to tap into our intuition. Two years ago, your goal would not have been to be a television star or a host, I'm guessing, because you have this other life. Is that other life going to take a back seat and will we see you more and more on camera? Well, definitely more on camera. I mean, I'm doing the whole spokesman thing, and then I'm a house DJ, so right even before the show, I mean, I was going to clubs and playing house music, and True Beauty really helped me out, started getting me across the nation, getting to play everywhere, and definitely when it comes to TV, I mean, I'm a salesman, so I like to sell, and I like to be on TV, so it kind of goes well together. Okay, so do you have that move with your hands when you're spinning that thing? He's on the move. You gotta, get, you gotta get down. You gotta get down with that. And, and the thing about Gemini's is you have to keep them excited. You have to keep them going. And David hasn't been doing nothing in the celebrity world. And you know what? She's been taping Cougar Town, this crazy cougar woman having sex with, you know, the pool guys and everything. You gotta get the slip and slide out, buddy. You gotta keep it interesting. Little John, me, Morgan Page, all these great DJs. And we get to go up there and just bang it down next to the El Pollo Loco. I mean, that's like the coolest thing in the world. Who is most compatible with whom? 
fire and air are usually the most compatible, so that you can make that any combination you want, like a Leo and a Libra. Oh! David comes in and he is like a tornado. Today is a crazy day astrologically because the way that the sun, moon, and Saturn aligned represents a test of my self-worth. And I'm just going to have to show the world that the face of Vegas needs an amazing person, and that's who I am. Dave is about to experience parental control. What is the best sign in terms of girlfriend you've had? Well, the best sign is all the signs. I love all the signs, right? Because Leo- All of them! Well, Leo is all about love. I'm just gonna stop you right there because right now you looking at me like you are the lion and I have on a pork chop necklace. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to stop it. Is this anything? Does David take it? So, you know, if David were truly psychic, he would know that he's being set up. <laughs> he's not psychic, he's an astrologer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, cut. <laughs> okay, we're, we're oh, okay, sorry. cool. All right. Um, yeah, well, I'll have to go with my new name. Okay, so I'm Joanna Angelitas, and I'm from Toronto. Originally from Toronto, but now I live in Puerto Rico. And so what brought you here? Oh, you know, I've always been into astrology and spiritual awakening. And I think, like, this was the perfect time because Jupiter was going into Leo, and I'm a Leo ascendant. So I felt like this was the moment to be here. And... I happened to go back to Toronto to visit a friend for her wedding. I was in the party and then I reconnected with my girlfriend, Jamie, who I've known for over 30 years. And we happened to say, let's do a Thelma and Louise trip to Sedona, Arizona. And it was perfect because that gave us the opportunity to meet David, who I had a reading with over six weeks ago. And it just blew my mind and he was amazing. He told me things that six weeks ago it was such a short time ago but it feels like a lifetime ago because at that time i couldn't have told you who i was then to who i am now are two different people so it was quite amazing so i had to meet him in person and then also seeing a lot of his webinars with chris one feather really he resonated with me a lot too and i really wanted to have a personal one-on-one -on -one reading with chris as well so um what about david's astrology I think David's very intuitive when he does his astrology. I don't think he necessarily just goes by what's on the paper or what's written in the stars. I think he really uses his intuition when he gives readings and that makes him very special. It also, he uses humor and really great <laughs> quirky analogies. <laughs> um, and uh, I think that that makes it real. You know, you can kind of resonate with him as a real person. Was there any specific horoscope that really talk to you that helped you in your life? Uh, from David? Mm -hmm. um, well, he, he definitely knew I was a Leo ascendant and he knew that this time in Jupiter would really sort of push me to a different level and that I really need to change. I was sort of stuck in a moment where I kind of was teeter-tottering on some things. You know, I said, oh, well, this is kind of what I want to do, but I wasn't quite sure and I wasn't really working that hard to do it. And he said, no, girl, you got to do it. You got to move. You got to do it now because time is not on your side. And there was only, you know, sometimes it only takes a few words from somebody. And then you sit there and you go, wow, okay, like I had to hear that, you know, from somebody who doesn't know me, which is amazing. So that's, that's really, I think, what astrologists and tarot readers and spiritual guides really do for you. They and David is a DJ slash astrologer. He, he should um, not be looking so directly at the is stars. is astrology really like psychic? They're not psychic, right? They no. just can, they can see like Mercury's in your planet. You should be working now. Can you put that on there? Can you put DJ Slash? Slash, yeah. Welcome to your inspirational astrology horoscope for Thursday, June 20th, 2013. I'm astrologer David Palmer, the Leo King, here to illuminate the collective consciousness. That's right, I just made the leoking.com. Well, it's actually been one of my projects in the back burner that finally is out. Of course, Sun and Jupiter I waited for. We still got the Sun and Jupiter today, but go to the site, check it out. I'll be posting more videos there. There's gonna be a lot happening as far as my persona really coming out as my true essence and what I came here to do. Really, the leoking.com is representing my truth. It is representing who I really am deep inside of here and what 
my journey is, what my destiny is. So check it all out if you guys get a chance. But this is us really expanding into new waters now because. So one of our, I think, secrets to success with Vision Boards at Hope, my tech company, was just kind of piggybacking off what you said, making sure we've really leveraged the wins we've had along the way. And I've kind of seen similarities. You've been on TV before and you make sure you prominently say as seen on TV and you are wearing on your sleeve because there's a sense of validation and same thing when we won accolades, we are proudly putting that out there. So I think that that's another part of it too, is, is like you said, you're almost like setting up this persona if it's with your brand or your personality and you're making sure to highlight these really cool features um, and experiences that you've had along the way to make sure that the um, audience senses some validation. So how have you chosen to do that? Maybe just give some examples of how you do that. I think that you're on the money with this subject. Nobody really talks about it. If you look at big brands, whether it's, you know, the Tigers right here in Detroit, right? It's like, if you win the World Series, you put the banner up and you let people know that you won the World Series or you let people know that you are the best at what you do. And that's important because when you're proud of your achievements and you represent them, the brand does that much better. Uh, I think there's a need to, to show that, whether you're on TV and you put it on the website as, look at, you know, here's a video if you want to find out more about my brand. You know, I think it's important to have in your about section or have aspects on your website or any of your apps or anything that you do, a section that is an understanding of the history or how you got there. I think that that is something people want to know and relate with. If it's something that doesn't have much of a background or anything, uh, it just feels too fresh. It seems like a baby fresh born, which is great to play with for a second, but you don't want to take it on long journeys with you. They start crying all the time. Like there's a need to, you want some age with it or you want some, some history along the way. Yeah, I, I completely agree. So what are some of your hopes and goals for your brand and how do you maybe see technology continuing to play a role? I think that the hope for my brand or, or I feel it's actually on track. It's where I want to go. It keeps advancing and I, and I just keep following technology. Whatever's new and hip and cutting edge, I will follow it. Uh, trying to get everything, whether it's on these new things like Vine or, you know, I use Instagram now, really popular. I'll do a quick little video where I take pictures. And I think it's important in social media to always be current and in it because one day goes by and you're not there, that's when they find somebody else. And so you want to be home for somebody. And I think it's not so much of where my next goals are, it's to continue on the path that has brought me success and to just keep following that algorithm. It's a science that you have to keep following. And if you follow it, it takes you to magical places like today that I'm at with you. Do you have a social management system so you don't have to post and keep track of all that? Is there something you use? The, the system I use now is Google Calendar is my best friend. Yeah. And I have everything pre-planned through my days, my weeks, and everything as reminders on my phone. And you know, if I don't live by that reminder, oh, oh, you know, I feel off. So I live by that and I just keep the content flowing. And really it's about uh, doing these new subscription models. I think subscription is so fun and so awesome and it's a way to start to make the content more valuable for others while at the same time making your business grow at rates that you could never dream of before. And it takes a lot of the, the workload off too because you can focus more in specific areas. And a lot of, I know a lot of people have been approaching you so you've done your job really well, but are you ever proactive in affiliate partnerships at all as well? Believe it or not, when you get to I feel a place of really great growth, it just all comes to you. And as an astrologer practicing spirituality, I feel that that's the secret. If you've ever read the book or listened to it, that if you want to step into your life, it all just comes to you. And yeah. I feel that's the secret. I had no idea I was doing this interview today. Yeah. But you know, the, the reality too is, um, you know, David did, you know, take risks and, and do this for, you know, no money at first and, and, and stayed committed to it and, and grew to this level where he's being featured on E! News next week. And, is you know having thousands of followers and subscription models working for him but you you really took risk and you really started at a very humble point and, and worked your way to this to this place and you know it's really commendable and i think people see the success stories but don't know that it, it takes it takes some hood spot and takes some commitment to to you know get to the get to the other side of the road we talk about balls or ovaries <laughs> but yeah that's well, i think depends I, on who I, you're I, talking I, about, think, I guess i think in any business, it's all about risk, but there's huge reward. Yeah. And it's about staying humble and it's about consistency. And with Facebook and Twitter now, 
if, if you're the kind of person who's trying to create something and you're not, you don't have one of those and there's nothing on it, guess what? It's pretty much nothing until it really is at that place nowadays. Believe it or not, that's the new world. It's a, if we're talking about tech, so I would say social media based off if we look at the top tech businesses, it is social media. And I feel that social media is the secret to any business success. So is that your number one tip or do you have anything else that you could think of? Number one share? tip because I watch it happen every day and I can go into any city now and find somebody I need or want to hang out with in any block of the world now because of that connection. And it's all about connection. Well, let's give a brief plug, not only for the li li oh, sorry, the leoking.com and the E! News coverage coming up, and maybe you can get some additional followers today as well. Yeah, you can find me at theleoking.com or find me on my YouTube page, uh, just The Leo King. It's pretty simple. You can check me out on E! Television on October 10th. And yeah, just keep following me on all my feeds, theleoking.com. Well, again, we're so thrilled to have you in Detroit today. We wish you the best on your future endeavors. This is Natalia Petrozuk guest host for streamdetroit.com.